Hey there everybody, James here, and today we are going to be talking about the Rolex Ring Command System and how it works within these watches that really has been an innovative feature uh, from Rolex. You know, a lot of people kind of criticize Rolex and talk about the fact that they don't really innovate and the changes that they make are usually small. Well, these two, the you know, the, with the Ring Command, really were some innovative work and uh, some of the coolest watches, I think, in the Rolex catalog. So let's start out with the Yachtmaster 2 and let's talk a little bit about the watch and then we'll talk about the Ring Command. So here we have the Yachtmaster 2. This was introduced in 2007. Uh, it got a uh, updated movement in 2013 that fixed uh, you know some issues that they were having that some folks were having with it, and then they also redesigned the dial and the hands in 2017. So this is the most updated version of it. Um, 44 millimeter case. It's the 116680 in stainless steel. Uh, we've got 14 millimeter case thickness on it. 50 meter or 50 millimeters lug to lug. So it is a little bit on the bigger side, but it's not huge. And then between the lugs, we have a 21 millimeter spacing there. Um, the movement in this is the 4161. So to date, it is still the most complex Rolex movement made. Tons of parts, uh, incredibly complex to make a programmable countdown timer, basically, which is what this is. 72 hour power reserve. It's a four hertz movement, so 28,800 vibrations per hour and 100 meters water resistance. So let's throw it on the wrist. With the clasp, you can see it's got the uh, clamshell as well as the hook, uh, beacon hook system. So when I put it on, you can see I have to pop it down first and then it locks into place. Uh, you'll also notice that I am using the Rubber B strap on this because I love Rubber B and I use them on most of my watches. Tend not to use the factory bracelets. I just like the design. I like the customization and it's a little bit different, you know, than what you would see on a traditional steel uh, sports bracelet. So this is the dial. This is how it looks on my wrist. You know, here's down the uh, side. A lot of people might say that this is too large for my wrist. I understand, I hear you, and I'm still going to wear it anyway because I love this watch. So let's talk about what's going on with this thing. So we've got the time, obviously, you can see the hour markers there and the hands in white gold. Uh, and then you've got this 10 through zero little uh, half semicircle here. And then you also have a sub-register, which is your seconds, and that's your true seconds. So the red hand is actually for the chronograph on this watch. So if I press the start button up here, the pusher, you'll see the hands start moving. And then the magic of this watch is that it's a countdown timer, programmable up to 10 minutes. And so you can see it's counting down from 10. Um, the other thing that we don't talk about a lot is it's a flyback and fly forward chronograph because this is made for sailboat racing. Now, I don't do any sailboat racing personally. However, I will say that if I'm cooking something on the stove or if I'm at the gym and I want to time my rest between sets, this is a wholly, wholly helpful uh, function on the dial here. So as you can see there, now that we're past 30, if I press this pusher, it's going to fly forward to the next minute. If I'm on this side of 30 and I press this pusher, it's going to fly me back. And I can just keep repeating that as many times as I want. So that's how you use it. What about this ring command? Let's talk about that. So I'm going to stop and reset the chronograph. So it's back at 10. To set the movement, that's where the bezel comes into play. So it's a ceramic bezel, uh, platinum inserts, with those numbers there in the text. So I turned it 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise. Then I have to push in the bottom pusher. And you can see it stays in. Now I'm going to screw out the crown. And once I'm there and move it forward, now I can control where I set my timer. And you can see it just jumps from 10 to zero and I can just keep cycling through that. That is how you set the timer on the Yachtmaster 2. So that's the first watch that we're looking at today with the ring command. So all I do is I turn the bezel back to be upright and then I'll screw my crown back in and then I press start and that starts my timer. So that is how this works with the Yachtmaster 2 um, to actually set the time all you do is you just pull the crown out. Once you screw it out, you just pull it out and then that will hack the watch and then you can set the time on it. So that's the Yachtmaster 2. Let's compare that 
Now to the other watch that uses the ring command system. This is the Sky Dweller. So this was introduced in 2012. First in a precious metal variant. Uh, they weren't super popular because of obviously the price of those precious metal models. Uh, then in 2017, that was when they introduced the stainless steel versions that have this 18 karat white gold bezel and then white gold hands and indices. That was really when the model started to grow, you know, gain some popularity. A couple different dial colors on it. You've got black, white, and then of course blue, which is what I have. Um, blue tends to be the most popular just because blue tends to be real hot right now. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why. I mean, it's a good looking watch. I can't, I can't deny that. Um, but uh, that's where we're at with that. So, um, as far as this one, this is the three two six nine three four. That's the reference. Uh, we've got a forty two millimeter case diameter, uh, fifty. I'm sorry, fourteen fourteen millimeters thick. So very similar again profile to the Yachtmaster two, fifty millimeters just about uh, lug to lug and then 22 millimeters between the lugs. So again, even though these two watches have a different case diameter, the lug profile is actually very, very close, uh, which is one of the reasons that I decided to get the Yachtmaster 2 was because I loved the Sky Dweller. And at first I was a little concerned that the Yachtmaster 2 might wear too huge, um, but it actually wears fairly similar. It's just kind of wider uh, because of the dial uh, diameter. Movement in this one is the 9001. So again, this is a annual calendar GMT, which we'll talk about in a second, as far as how the ring command factors in here. Same kind of other specs, 72 hour power reserve, four Hertz at 28,800 vibrations per hour and hundred meters water resistance as well, because we have a screw down crown. So let me throw this one on the wrist. And this one is just the beacon hook. Also on rubber beak, you can see it's got a little two-tone blue going on there, which I really love. Kind of hits some of the different blues. And this is what the Sky Dweller looks like on the wrist. Really, really love it. Still one of my favorite watches. And again, depending on the lighting, you get some real cool different blues out of the dial, which I just love. It's fantastic. So let's talk about using this one and the Ring Command bezel. So it's very simple to use. The Ring Command bezel has a home position turned all the way clockwise. So all the way clockwise is where you start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my crown, take that out. When I'm here, this just winds the watch. I'm just winding it right now. That's all it does. If I pull it out and try and turn it, it doesn't do anything right now because the ring command has not engaged the movement. So what I'm gonna do to do that is really to set this watch, you wanna turn it all the way, which is three clicks counterclockwise, and then I can't move it anymore. As you see, I have hacked the watch, the seconds have stopped, and now I can move everything in sync. So what I would do first is I would set my reference time, which is the circle inward of the dial here. And let's just say, oh, let's just say it's, what is that, eight o'clock, 8.07. Let's just say that. Now, when I move the bezel one click to the right one click clockwise the movement or the uh, second hand starts again and now I can set my local time just the hours it will also jump my date so if you look at the date here you'll see it jump to one um, so that's the nice thing about this is you can set the local time just by the hours independently uh, you can't drive the date backwards so it doesn't work for that but you can drive it forwards so so let's just go, you know, let's just go here. I'll set it at 4.07. Now if I go one more, now I can access the date. And it is bi-directional winding, which is nice. Now the other thing you'll notice is there's a little red square over here on the eighth hour. And if I go forward, it will jump to nine. And that is the annual calendar feature of this watch. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that would be September. So that would be, okay, it's September 1st and it's 4.07. And then my reference time is it's 8.07. That's how that works. Uh, very, very cool. And it does distinguish between 30 and 31 day months. So even though when you set it, it will go to 31 every time in 
actual using of the watch, you only need to set this at the end of February because of the fact of the leap year. But otherwise, it's going to distinguish for you, you know, the fact that, say, March has 31 days and April only has 30. That was one of the things that attracted me most to this watch initially was I didn't know a watch could do that, but this one does. So I turned it one more click clockwise. I'm going to screw my crown back down, and that is the Sky Dweller. So that's the deal with the Ring Command bezel. Again, one of the coolest features, in my opinion, that has been introduced on a watch um, in quite a while. And um, both watches, I love the look, I love the design, I love the functionality, kind of have, you know, unique features of them. You know, the Yachtmaster 2 definitely is your sporty, kind of out there, a little bit louder watch with the ceramic bezel, you know, and especially on the white strap, I really love the way it looks. It's great for summertime, but you can wear it all year round. You know, versus the Sky Dweller, which is a little bit more reserved and kind of has more of a professional, like, elegance to it. Uh, but the the fluted bezel does make it look, you know, it stands out a bit with the fluting on there. You know, so if you see him across the room, you know, here's kind of the profile. Very different. Two very different watches, but also very similar in the fact that they use the Ring Command bezel and the Ring Command system. So... That's the two watches. If you're looking to buy one, you know, the Sky Dweller is typically going to be harder to find. Um, you can find both pre-owned, but uh, the Rolex will typically, or sorry, the uh, Sky Dweller is a little bit more rare. So if you're getting looking to get one from AD, you may be waiting a bit longer for a Sky Dweller than you would a Yachtmaster 2. Again, mostly because the Yachtmaster 2 is always in the shadow of the Daytona, and people don't talk about it a lot. Everybody wants a Daytona. Nobody wants a Yachtmaster 2, but I think they should because I think it's a pretty cool watch. So retail pricing, you got about 16, 16,000 for the Sky Dweller, about 19 for the Yachtmaster 2. Um, you get a better deal on the Yachtmaster 2 just because, again, not a lot of people are looking for them, so you can find them pre-owned for a couple thousand more than retail. Uh, versus the Sky Dweller, where you may pay a little bit more, you know, maybe a five or six thousand above retail versus like a two or three uh, with the Yachtmaster 2. Um, so, obviously, some different uh, dial variants, a couple of different metal variants that are out there now. Um, you know, they offer the Sky Dweller on Oyster Flex now as well, which is really, really nice, and I love that look, um, which is why I, I do the straps on them. But, um, you know, couldn't, couldn't suggest more if you're looking for a, a rolex watch and you're trying to decide what to get one of these would be a great you know first second or tenth choice in my opinion so hope that you've enjoyed this video hope you got something useful out of it as we talked about the rolex ring command and uh you know again at the end of the day my wish for you is that you find whatever watches you're looking for because the only thing that matters is that you love the watch on your wrist take care and i'll talk to you soon bye